The Russian Grandmother's Wonder Tales, Chapter 13 Getting Ready It was very interesting in the little boy's house the next day, for the mother was getting ready for the journey, and the sisters were helping. There was food to be cooked, and there were clothes to be washed, and it all made a very pleasant bustle. The little boy was in the thick of it all. He thought he was helping, though perhaps the others thought differently. At any rate, he was in a state of most delightful excitement. When it grew dark, the work was all done, and the little boy went to the grandmother's room. We are all ready, grandmother, he said, and I have been patient all the time. Well, well, said the grandmother. Surely you deserve a reward then. Shall I tell you a story? Oh, dear little grandmother, yes, cried the little boy. Will it be about Renegi? Not about Renegi, nor any of the animals you know, said the grandmother. It will be about the seven stars. Once upon a time, there was a king who had a wonderfully beautiful daughter. But there came a dragon and stole her away and vanished, leaving not a trace behind. So the king called his high chamberlain and commanded him to go forth into the world and seek the princess, and on no account to come back without her. The high chamberlain set out and searched throughout the whole world, but nowhere could he find the slightest trace of the king's daughter, nor the least clue to her whereabouts. However, an old woman advised him to go to such and such country and inquire for the dragon mother for she alone was able to give him information about the stolen princess. And verily, the High Chamberlain followed this counsel. After most toilsome wanderings, he at last arrived safely at the Dragon Mother's house and begged her to give him such information as she had as to the abiding place of the King's daughter. The Dragon Mother answered, My dear friend, stay here overnight. What God has given us, we shall share with you. You shall not suffer hunger in my house. As soon as my sons, the dragons, return home from afar, I will ask them about the princess. I have five sons, each one wiser and cleverer than the other. The first has the power of stealing anything that he takes a fancy to. He could steal the calf from the cow or the foal from the mare and they never observe it. The second can follow up the trace of any lost object, though it has been lost for years. The third draws a sure arrow upon anything that he can see. The fourth can build an impregnable fortress in an instant, and can hide anything he chooses within it, so that no one can possibly find it. And the fifth is as bold as a falcon, and as swift as lightning when there is anything to be overtaken and caught. While she was speaking, her sons, the dragons, came home, and the mother inquired of them if they knew anything of the whereabouts of the king's lost daughter. To be sure, they answered, she is with a more powerful dragon than we. He stole her away from her father, the king, and now keeps her in one of his castles. I adjure you, interrupted the high chamberlain, Help me to find her. I may on no account appear before the king and live unless I bring his daughter with me. My master will not show himself ungrateful to you. The dragons declared themselves quite willing to help him. The second brother traced up the scent, and the first brother stole the lovely maiden and brought her back with him. But the more powerful dragon pursued after them, took her away, and flew up into the air to carry her to a place of safety. Then the third brother fitted a bolt to his crossbow, drew it, sped the arrow, and hit that dragon in the very middle of his heart. With a fearful outcry, the dragon fell from the clouds and was dashed to little bits upon a rock, and thus it would inevitably have been the king's daughter whom the dragon held tightly clasped had not the fifth brother flown swiftly and caught up the maiden so that she was kept safe and sound. 
But now ensued a sudden and unlooked-for danger, for the dead dragon's brother drew near, and several other monsters with him. And it would soon have been all over with the brothers if the fourth had not speedily erected a strong fortress in which all the brothers, the king's daughter, and the high chamberlain safely concealed themselves. For a long time, those hideous dragons lay in wait around the fortress, but they finally went away, having accomplished nothing. Then the five brothers, the gracious maiden, and the high chamberlain came out and went home to the dragon mother, and the eldest son said, Is it not true, little mother, that the maiden belongs to me, who rescued her from the furious dragon? The second brother said, But you would never have found her, nor rescued her, if I had not traced up the scent. The third brother interrupted, Of what good would it have been that you, eldest brother, rescued her, and you, second brother, traced up the scent, if I had not destroyed the monster at the right moment? Therefore, in all right and reason, the maiden belongs to me. Here, the fifth brother struck in. By right, the maiden belongs to me. For if I have not caught her up in the very nick of time, she would not now be in the land of the living. And the fourth brother said, If you will consider the whole matter impartially, you will see that I have the most righteous claim upon the maiden for all your trouble would have gone for nothing if I had not made the castle at the right moment and bidden her, and you too, to come within it. And now the chamberlain put in his word, All your pretensions are idle. The maiden is mine. For if I had not told you that she was stolen away, the first would not have rescued her, nor the second traced up the scent, nor the third destroyed the monster, nor the fifth caught up the maiden, and the fourth would have concealed no one in his castle. Thus, all the six drove for possession of the maiden, until the dragon mother put in her word, If this is so, then you are all in the right, but the maiden can surely not belong to you all, but you can all take her for your sister, and love and protect her as long as you and she live. And so they did, and in remembrance thereof, they and the maiden were set in the sky, and can be seen there to this day, and men call them the seven stars. At least, so goes the story. Dragons are different from Renegi and Pets and Isagrim, observed the little boy. Don't you like them as well? asked the grandmother. I like them, answered the little boy but I don't know them as well as I know Renegi and Isagrim. I am not used to them, grandmother. You will get used to them while you are at your other grandmother's, where you are going tomorrow, said the grandmother. The stories of her commune are not at all the same as the stories of this commune. Why not, grandmother? asked the little boy. I don't know why not, answered the grandmother, but it is always so. Every commune has its own stories. There are many dragons in those of your other grandmother's commune. Now you are going out into the world. You will get very wise, for you will know the stories of two communes. End of chapter 13 Please go to the next video for chapter 14.